Are we ready? This is a struggle. We have to like keep everything stood up. But we bike. We bike. We bike. We bike. We fucking bike after all this time. Knock the cobwebs off. And we've kicked it off. Um, yeah, there just hasn't been much to the podcast about, really. Um, no, at this I'm, current moment in time. No point of us oh, it's the same thing. There's nothing that's really changed. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And, um, that's how we start off podcast. We don't we actually exactly. I don't think we've ever started off podcast in a good way. No, we have good intros compared to like yeah, not to not, not to get my shit up, but compared to some other podcasts, like you know. Why are you like, sending yeah, shots? They, they know who they are. Why are you sending they know shots? Who they are. But why are you sending shots already? They, they just know who they are. What bro. are we? What? How long are we in? Like they thirty know, seconds. They, they just know who they are. We, okay, they know who they are, but we're thirty seconds. I mean, in. their pool is nice. Mine's as big as what I'm saying. Mm, mm. I'm that. I'm not gonna say. I mean, yeah, don't say it. Yeah, no, I don't want to. I mean, their pop filters are nice, <laughs> but mine's just pops less. I'm saying, like, mm. Mm. you can't say. You see, pop. you see the you see the pop filters. You can say pop. See the pop filters. Yeah, how was your week? Um, oh, we probably should intro if we're really trying to talk our shit. No cast podcast episode seventeen. Ooh. I keep up. I still keep up. I remember from the last one we were talking about sixteen. You're the only person who actually listens to every episode. Yeah, I go back and listen. I have to edit. It. Well, if you so. edit it, that's sad though. If you're the only person. No, I have to edit it. I have to edit it. Watch the visual. Watch it some more. And that's Sink one, it up. But that's one thing that I don't think a lot of people understand who don't like make content like. Oh yeah, There's, like you hate the sound of your voice, but if time you finish everything, I watch. I watch something. It's actually um, due to the fact that you hear more reverb in your own voice than you hear in other in other um, in other tones yeah. when you're listening when you're editing or listening. And isn't, back it, to isn't it there's something that the way you hear yourself is not going to be the way anyone else hears you? you Basically, are, the way you hear yourself is. Uh, now I'm not fact checking. I'm, I'm judging this off of a off of a TikTok. People are going to believe us anyway. So. Yeah, people are going to. It's facts. It's facts. If we're saying on yeah. a podcast, like. But, um, yeah, generally, when you hear your own voice back, your voice is the store because the reverb's boosted. Um, it's like psychologically, you're altering your own voice in your head. And I saw the TikTok guy go, well, if you go like this... You're basing your facts off TikTok. Yeah, I know. But he said that. And then I said that. And then needless to say, it didn't work. But that's probably down to the sheer fact that so I'm used to the sound of my own voice. Oh, now. oh, I really don't yeah. like that. Yeah, we can hear a bit more, can't you? No, like, it's like when you press hard... Yeah, it's apparently actually, if you press hard, see what I mean? Because yeah. it actually works. Because yeah. you're almost hearing yourself now the way other people would hear you. Because it's like I don't know how it works like that. I wonder how many people are gonna do that now when after listening or watching. Oh, because nobody's gonna, you know they have well, to it's watch not their it. voice. Yeah, no, yeah. but I'm saying like they'll do it to themselves. Because you so, know, like when someone says like, oh, if you take out your tongue and you and you try and reach you something, like, but someone says it, oh, and then you skill, do it. Someone says if you if you shake salt, yeah, and then people just do it. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot to talk about this week. How's your week? This happens every single time. How's your week? And then this shit's gonna get clipped. It was good. I um, I finally got around to doing my theory test. Which one? Yeah, round of applause. Round of applause. Yeah, I did my theory test. I, st- I studied for it the day before. Of course. Yeah, because I'm ultimate procrastinator. I, ge- I genuinely think I work better with the least, with the less time I have. No, the only thing at this current moment in time I'm on job on is actually editing the podcast, like. From when we edit the podcast, I have a certain deadline. It's like if we, if we, so bear in mind, if we're recording it today, yeah, while we on Wednesday night, yeah, this shit has to be out by Saturday or Friday. Yo, that's that's commitment. Well, this, probably not, probably not, because 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 I'm seeing Emma again for the first time in like five or six weeks. Yeah, you're gonna be a no show for a while. Yeah, I might be. A no, I'm sorry, like I might be a while editing this one. If but, this episode comes out on Sunday, it's gonna be some. Yeah, it has to be. So I'll probably be going for Sunday. Sunday's not a bad day. To well, that's the one time like. In anything, I give myself my own personal deadline for stuff. Because yeah. everything else, I could actually have a deadline for it. I'm just like, ah, like, you know, like, yeah. when it really matters, that's just how I work. You yeah. know what I mean? But, like, yeah, no, I basically, yeah, I studied for material like two days before. I remember telling people in work, and they're like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I hear people going, no, oh, like, I studied for a few weeks before I studied. But the thing is, it's 700 questions. All you have to really do is familiarize yourself with the 700 questions. Because multiple assume, choice is my bag. But I assume that, like, out of the 700 questions, a lot of them are, like, common sense. Like, you should know it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are common sense. Like, a lot of them will be instances like, oh, you're pulling out a main road onto a, an estate road. What do you have to be wary of? And I'd be like, 
oh, uh, this or that, or a pedestrian walking out in front of two cars. It's like straightforward shit. And it's like, what do you do if you see that pedestrian? Drive faster or stop? Drive faster. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, but that's what I said. Fuck them kids. That's what I said. I got 38 or 40. That's what I said. Yeah, like, that's, that's why you that's, got 38 that's or 40. That's what the fuck I said. Like, you know, the but, two questions that you got wrong. Yeah, but I'd say, I'd, say my, I'd say my week's been... A lot of weeks just feel like a lot of same weeks, if you get me. Man, every day is just like, starting to feel the same. It just overlaps into the same day. This is what people last year would have called depression. This is technically like but I think if a it's symptom a, of depression where a day overlaps into another day. But I feel like because it's such a... Like it's not an individual thing. No, yeah, it's like everyone's yeah. doing it. It's everybody, not. Everybody, everybody's got. Everybody's going through it right now. So yeah. it's like every single other day over, overlaps into another day, and like, it's like I, I generally thought that the whole lockdown thing would be more detrimental to my mental health than it has been. Yeah. Whereas, like, I, like I feel like by by choice when I decide to stay inside for a prolonged period, hmm. I'm okay with that. Like that's that's when I actually like. That's when I get more sad, but I'm saying like when it's actually not by choice, I'm 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 cool with it. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with it too. My whole thing though with the um, I just don't know because as of yesterday, it's been announced that we have restrictions again. Like the cabinet have yeah been chopping up or whatever, and they and, and they're very contradictory in what very they're saying. contradictory. Everything is very inconsistent right now. They basically got uh, martial law rules where the guards can yeah. go into your house without no seventy year olds have to cocoon again. Um, the amount of people at a inside gathering in your house back down to six From and sh- it's just depressing because it's just a reflection of like our government being incompetent about it well I and think the, the whole change of government you can see the sole focus on economy over anything now whereas like bro do you know what this lockdown has taught me and now we're getting into a bag a lot of these guys they quantify us like in numbers and they don't fucking care. And this isn't me, like, tr- not trying to get into... The government doesn't Fuck care. Off. No, this is really, like... I've had my own personal experiences now. Yeah. That I can't get into in a podcast, because at the end of the day, I'm just not a person that... I, I live as much out as I can on podcasts as I can, mm. but there's a lot of stuff I can't get into that's personal. But personal for me, like, experiences yeah, going yeah. to doctors or whatever, that I won't get into, like, yeah. the past few weeks. A lot of these guys don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Like it's like in the movies where um, you're watching them. Um, they have they have a sequence where a guy goes to a psychologist every single day. He goes to the psychologist, and the psychologist does the same thing: smile, smiles and nods, writes in her notebook, and then by like sixty days, like he has this revelation. Going, Actually, you don't fucking care. Yeah, this is this is a public service. It's not yeah. even privatized yeah, for me. Yeah. This is a public service. You're gonna do the same thing with the next man that walks yeah. in. And then I had that realization that just going into the doctors like like. And it's gotten to a point where, with COVID put into the equation now, it's an inconvenience that you're there. Yeah. N- now, to some degree, that now this isn't me generalizing it, but mm. it's, it's upon personal it's reflection. Yeah, personal, yeah. Because listen, I made a complaint. Yeah. I've converted into my Karenism. I'll go into my Karenism You've been later. complaining a hell of times. But I made a complaint know. about my one of my appointments. Yeah, I made a complaint. So you made a complaint about one of your appointments, yeah. and you made a complaint to Financial Times as well. Dog, my doctor, was, my doctor was fucking rushing me. So I went down to do it. But hasn't, there's been, um, I know the GP in Barbrigan has had several mm. complaints like the, like that they've been very weird. Yeah, so you go in, you sign a waiver, you go through all these grounds to show you don't have COVID. Okay. And then you walk into an appointment office and the doctor's still jittery with you because he thinks you might have COVID. So now your presence in there to It feels check, unwanted. It feels unwanted. Yeah. And that's mainly what has happened now. Like um, you're seeing that now in shops. Like there's almost like a tax on you having to be there. But you know what I was thinking about the whole like infrastructure of Ireland. Like mm. from a whole, yeah. When I've been traveling and stuff. Okay, one thing I don't understand now: why is there no 24-hour pharmacies? Why do pharmacies close at a certain yeah. time? Anywhere, yeah. anywhere you go in the world, any other country, you will have in major cities you will have a 24-hour pharmacy. A lot, a lot, even opening hours and stuff, isn't a lot of it still based off the church? And yeah, it's like some days they're gonna means. open later because yeah. off licenses in England are still open by 12. Yeah, but like that's I think the whole thing about Ireland and its religious laws instead of yeah, that is a whole different story. Like that's for a whole different day about how fucked up yeah. that is. But keep, yeah, keeping on that, um, 
I was saying, like, at this stage, it feels like you have to pay a COVID tax on everything. Yeah. Like, COVID tax in a lot of other places is wearing the mask. Mm. That's that's the COVID tax you have to pay. I had to... So, I have to ring a doctor, yeah? I have to pay 55 euro for the, for the phone appointment. You have to pay 55 euro to talk man, on the I phone? Had to, I had to pay 55 euro to talk on the phone. That's a nasty. A relatively counterproductive procedure. You're talking on the phone and the doctor's guessing what on basically, like, what's up? So, you so, then, a, so you then you go problem. in, if they, if they feel you, they have to bring you in, mm. they'll bring you in. But I'd say, but the second time I did it, they brought you in, and now there was a review cost. Yeah. It's 35 euro. So you're... You're what, 80 euro in the bag? So, so this is what happened to me, yeah. I paid 55 euro to talk to this doctor. And I was like, da 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, I was right, come in. Uh, next week and we'll do because I, I just said straight up it's not even that serious but I just don't find it, I find these counterproductive like I'm yeah. paying 55 euro for this so I'd rather come in and see you yeah. for my grant so then we go in and tell me what these guys go oh yeah uh, rev- review costs are uh, 35 euro now physical reviews <laughs> so this is the COVID tax this is literally just literally COVID tax get... so explain to me yeah. why I have to pay an additional 35 euro yeah it doesn't make any sense. I know it's an inconvenience for you to have to treat me or have to, but I have no, some waivers. No, it's not an inconvenience. It's I'm not f- coming in heaving a sweat. It's like, their you fucking know? job. Yeah, it's their fucking like, job. Imagine if, you said, imagine if you said the people in pennies. Like, imagine you, they were like, hey, can you just point me out where the uh, children's section is? And you're like, yeah, if I'm going to do that, you have to pay me five euros. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of places you don't even clock it. There's, there's this unnecessary, like, fucking COVID attacks going on. So I went in, and yeah, and this doctor's like, yeah, don't go near me and shit. Yeah, this stuff just like yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, 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 I'm not gonna exaggerate. Yeah, yeah. Like, like there's, there's like seats, and he's like, oh yeah, like sit back there, and all. I'm like, so wait, did he? So you had to go into the doctor to do physical just to do what he told you to do on the phone, basically. Yeah, and this guy just really, the this guy really kept a social distance on a man that said he didn't have COVID, confirmed it, signed a waiver, did all that shit. Yeah, and also paid. 80 euro as but a I still, I still think the whole thing like I think for in general like people in that position they have a, an attitude towards people our age oh like, yeah like there is oh, yeah. like and even with everything going on now whereas like when the cases went up and stuff it's only getting blamed on people having yeah. house parties and people and young people socialising but there's this war perception of young people in this country I'll start off by um, on, a, on a on a health spectrum uh, a lot of time and I'll be open. I'll say, I I I am a I'm a thorough guy that likes to go and have an appointment. If I have if I have it if I if I have a niggle in my wrist or something or a pain mm. in my wrist, I like to go to doctors and check it out. Just yeah. to, just to see. There's there's this perception a lot of time with doctors, where they look at you as a young strapping person and yeah. they dismiss it. They don't think that anything's wrong. But with every you. day there's young people in this country that get diagnosed. Yeah. And like we said, like. Even a girl I was following, I know, I know her as well from work and, work and stuff. Yeah, Carly Mahadi who just got cleared of cancer. Congratulations, by the way. She was fighting for this. She was fighting for Lauren the breast check uh, below twenty five. Like, yeah, I still don't understand the whole thing. Yeah, how, how that's still not a thing that girls can but get. But doctor's checked. perception is that even stuff like um. What's this, it's all the, these form of illnesses you can't the, get them till 50, the 60 cervical, cervical yes, check yeah cervical check too, you can't yeah. get that until you're 25 or yeah. something like that. that's so, ridiculous doesn't make but sense but it's ridiculous and then this perception that uh, like young people can withstand COVID when there's young people that have died from but, COVID yeah no but the thing is like they, they literally have the perception where it's like oh it's the young people who are going to go around spreading it and they're they're not gonna get sick because they're stripping like they're 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 young they're fit. But bro, why did they fucking why did they fucking push the five stage? I don't know, but I, I like I just don't understand that how the government is just getting away with so many things that they can just blame on the youth and the middle yeah. like the lower class people. Yeah. Whereas like you can see like even with the whole thing in direct provision and stuff like that, like out of the like. 1,200 cases that there's been in the last two weeks, 500 have come from the meat factories or direct provision. Mm. But this is going to be blamed on young people having house parties. Yeah. But there's much bigger issues than people fucking having a graph party next week. Yeah. Like, I don't know how people are getting, like, the government's just getting away with all of this. And they want schools to start back this month. Yeah. 
like skills is where it's gonna skills are gonna be the cesspool again for man the, them little fucking kids you know them little fucking little fuckers who just sit at the back of class and they cough with their tongue out yeah <coughs> yeah and they know what's going on so they'll do it on purpose god knows man god knows but like, this is speaking for me who has taught classes of 30 plus kids yeah and you just know what they're like like you just know that they'll literally go up to the teachers go i have covid ha 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 yeah. cough on them just to get attention and it's a cry out for help because like obviously it's not they're not getting sport at home and stuff oh that's another <laughs> but that, no, that's a whole different thing oh, you're going into another time no, but, like, but you're right though on the whole um demonization of you people yeah in that sense where like it can't just be down to like the sole element can't be down to house parties it's like what we said about the the march mm. a few months back that can't be one of the sole factors why there'd be a spike at the time when people thought there might be a spike and there wasn't and and there was yeah there wasn't but any any increased amount of cases they're just going to blame on the same thing over again it's just like rinse and repeat yeah yeah young no, people is. do something they're the problem it is yeah but how does a go- but how does a government own up to their own failures they don't the government never owns up to their own failures no they don't they don't and that's been that's they, been every they, country they, for every they scapegoat naturally yeah but since the beginning of the time, government never puts fault on themselves. Yeah. There's always blaming someone else. Yeah. No matter what. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's it, really. And that's what it's like. I think we'll look... You know when we look at our history books when we're in school, mm. and we look back at shit that happened, like, in, say, like, the 19... Like, early 1900s and stuff, and we're like, man, that was only 80 years ago. How... Why did it not do this? Why did it not do that? Like, how did it not see that going on? But in hindsight, we can see it now, and it's like, this is what's going on now. And people are going to look in the future and think, why were we so stupid and ill-advised? Like, mm. there's just uh, it's it, it, it's it's something that's heavy on my heart as a young person too, because it's it's just the negligence of the government that us as young people we get affected by. It. Yeah. So it's this complacent idea that we had one good week in in, in this whole five stage. Mm. The turning point for us, where our five stage got that got a uh, got pushed forward, yeah, was off the basis of we had one good week, yeah. But I think that's such a it's such a deeper thing in Ireland, though. <laughs> like if, if we see something that's kind of good, we'll fucking go for it, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Instead of instead of remaining precautious, yeah. like let's not get to the yeah. The, that's the thing with Ireland. But like, but, but like look at look at the, like all the Asian countries. They waited until they had zero cases, like in back to back to back to back. Bro, Spain were in a Spain were in a lockdown for a month. No matter how much the cases and they, lowered, and, and they had two thousand five hundred cases today. And yeah, and their cases would lower by tenfold but at no, the time. But yeah. yeah, but now it's, it's it proves that it doesn't yeah. mean jack shit. Like, well, the second wave was kind of imminent. But the only thing for us was there was a lot of moments where we just fucked it. Like, yeah, as a good like. I, th- I think what they're pro- like what is proposed to come in now is such a more sound idea where it's going to be controlled by county and by like the way it will be controlled by Fingal. Certain areas will have their own level of COVID. Like whereas like we'll have a red like the way with the weather is like we'll have an amber alert if yeah. there's a high COVID like yeah. rise. We'll have you a mean red like alert tackling it if it's communal. I, I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. You can't do it as a whole because like what happens if Cork has zero cases? And then we have a thousand cases. Dublin people are still allowed out to Cork, and that's how it's yeah. going to spread. But if we do it in a state like we lock down our own small communities, that's the only way it's going to be. Like what Kildare did. Exactly, what yeah. Kildare offering yeah. Leash did. And I like that now, though. I like that um, like before an RT would get like, uh, reported 300, but there wasn't a breakdown before of whether it's communal or, or whether thing, it's dispersed like, across it like, Leicester. Out of, the, or, out of like, the what was it 200 cases 110 were just from Kildare alone yeah and out of that 110 in Kildare 90 were from the meat factories that were had the big COVID outburst like yeah so it just shows you that like once you break it down it doesn't actually seem as bad as a whole yeah and there was intervention on that too which was good so yeah you but just, I, still, I still think it's fucked up you just gotta look like ideally you just have to look at it it's still fucked up but you do have to just look at the positives like we do intervene on stuff quickly yeah Let's let's go by saying that the government fucked it. Yeah. But I'm saying that. But we're not saying that in a way. It's just like 
yeah. oh fuck the government then. yeah no because yeah. our way of intervention is actually very good yeah. in this country yeah like the <laughs> like I mean we eventually got there with the with the masks we eventually got there it, it was a they only announced well, six times like from the cabinet that you have to wear masks and there was protests then, in town yeah every day then, but uh, that's uh, there's protests in town about everything there's protests in town about the, the Debenhams redundancy like Man. It's probably fucking two weeks pay or something, you know what I mean? But yeah, shout out, shout out Devin and <laughs> shout out Devin and staff. You didn't deserve that shit, but ah oh, man, it's it's wild. It's a, it's a rough week for shit. Will we get into the Balbergen? The crazy shit going on here. Yeah, the crazy shit going yeah. on Balbergen. I'll uh, I'll just restart. So what we're discussing was um the what what happened in Balbergen last week. We're a bit late on it. Um, because because we're a notecast podcast we're notecast podcast so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're internet explorer podcast <laughs> internet explorer <laughs> safari it should drop some week later firefox podcast <laughs> oh did we mention there's a pandemic lads there's a pandemic going on yeah there's a pandemic going on yeah 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 mm. yeah it's, it's covid19 oh yeah or coronavirus yeah 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 I just thought I would announce that I love sending out emails <laughs> covid19 I, I, I remember I remember I had, corona was the wave and then everyone just stopped doing like yeah no but like when you're sending them formal emails you're saying due to the unforeseen circumstances with covid19 <laughs> I get in my bag when I send them emails <laughs> yeah but what I was saying is um, so what happened about Brigham basically broadly put in a, um yeah, basically a fire. A fire took place in the house. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, fire. But it's the way the media spun it, bro. I don't understand how so many different like rumors go around so quickly about one certain thing. Was I heard three different stories about the fire? Yeah, but this town's always been Chinese whispers, man. We love bitching. And I know it's oh, just an yeah, Irish yeah. thing. It's always been Chinese whispers, like. But like I know it's an Irish thing. Yeah. That we love gossip, and every single time it's about gossip and who's yeah. doing what, and that's what we feed off as a culture. Yeah. But it's it is jarring to see though. But I just don't get like to give people context. I'm not gonna say the guy's name because I know him personally. Like, like yeah. I like I used to get I used to get child minded in this house. I I don't know him as well these days, but mm. I knew him personally from getting child minded in that house and shit like that. And um, so not gonna. But basically, yeah. What what allegedly happened was there was an electrical fault. Yeah. Which led to the house being burnt down. We, we're gonna say allegedly a lot. Yeah. The next one. Yeah. No, because we actually don't know what's going on. But a lot of information is wrong. Yeah. A lot of information is fucking wrong. Yeah. I take everything. This year's taught me like to take everything with a grain of salt because a lot of information is wrong. But. Yeah, thankfully he thought I, I was talking to him. Um, I bumped into him in the gym actually, he, and he was t- telling me the house insured. So, oh, f- yeah, praise the Lord for that. That's what yeah. I'm saying. There's a bit of good news, like insurance. And but, but there, wasn't there a GoFundMe as well? For, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean it's not anything like mm-hmm. that. I'm criticized, but I'm saying like yeah. I think I got ten ten grand off of that. Yeah, yeah. So whatever happens, that the money. house insured. But yeah, but the way the media spun it is. Um, for a while now, we've been in beef with like other towns, and it, and, it, and it, it's a broad topic to get into. But we're we, we're basically in beef with what is it, Tala, fucking Blanche. But like, I think no, but I think the whole thing is since when we that's were, the narrative but like, anyway. But like since when we were kids, you'd always hear the stories like oh Blanche boys hate the Balbriggan boys, and they're always yeah out. yeah. But like it's just such a thing where we we try and create a gang culture. Like we're very. We always idolize American culture in a sense where it's like we kind of feed into something more than it's the it actually is. of UK culture too. It is. We just sense yeah. it. No, but like we sensualize, like sensationalize everything like that. Like yeah. Gang warfare, everything like. But it's not gang. <laughs> but no, but I'm saying that like, you'd have ten kids hanging around about Brigham, and then uh, you'd hear on Brigham connected the next day a gang of kids harassed me on my way home. Yeah, and the whole thing with like gang related shit in America and gang related shit in the UK is it's it's proximity beef. It's not yeah. like it's not beef where, yeah. Like Blanche and Bob Brigan are such a. It's a very hard distance to get. To. It's a very hard distance. Public like, transport, you're taking yeah. like an hour and a half. So this is like, oh, we've set up our own gang. Blanche set up our own gang. Let's just claim we don't fuck with each other and go all the way across the town to each other. Like, yeah, it's like a. It's and for a, what, man? 
it's like a figmented thing where it's like you create a narrative and a beef that isn't there but because and you, it's not to sound dismissive because because maybe it's deeper than that yeah. to some no, but of, isn't co- it, like, of course people are going to get more like personal on their level yeah. whereas he did this to me he does then that ends I, fuck, I don't fuck with him but like yeah like come on like yeah and I get it and I get it, it is deeper than that to some lads but I've said this before on the podcast like when you when you walk out of this town mainly what do you want to stand for yeah ideally what you want to stand for yeah like, like do you really want to be known as the guy that was in a gang or do you want to be known as something else obviously it's easier said than done to yeah. say to someone like that because like people who are in these gangs like they, they feel like a sense of protection they feel a sense of brotherhood like there is the pros that they see yeah. to live and in that I, type I like of lifestyle and I, I like the way you brought that perspective into it because there is camaraderie there yeah. in gangs too and gangs are a product of they find they confide in each other yeah and they're a product of like but like they obviously see society in a sense where they don't feel society is helping them in any way so yeah. the only way they can make but it that's what in this world to, like, is, it, is, it, is it a sense of society has failed them but the, like the gangs don't happen in high socioeconomic areas like, yeah. you, you don't hear about gangs coming out of South Dublin yeah. they happen in areas with low socioeconomic like spectre like it's the low income areas that these gangs are formed yeah and again we've had this discussion me and you in a sense where like, what is there to do in these areas from us personally speaking there's not much to do than just hang around with your friends and sit in a park or sit up at a shopping centre like there isn't any things for activities for us to do there's, there's honestly not a lot that gets invested into this town man there's not a lot what, like what happened to the 20 mil that was supposed to get injected into the town well you can see that their, their, their main focus is focusing on if, like making the town prettier yeah making the town more aesthetically pleasing yeah put a fucking few trees and a few plants and that's yeah. what yeah like the refurbishment of the uh, of the coast pretty much yeah to make it to, it's, and, all, it's and, all smoke and mirrors and well. what did they do they built a nursing home that's gonna stick out like a sore tomb on the probably the most scenic area in Balbriggan yeah it's all smoke and mirrors man it's 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 paint over rotten wood like like at the at the end of the day because there's just the town there, is there's only so much ways you can polish shit yeah like, that's basically all it is but where's the youth services is like 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 we grew up on Faroga yeah so Faroga Faroga was this thing for context for people it was, it was an after school thing that was based in central Balbriggan where for an hour of your day you basically mitched on doing homework that's the only negative of it you mitched on doing homework for a few or, hours like, but like you could get your homework done and you'd be like yeah. hey lads do you want to go yeah it depends on what you're built like, yeah. <laughs> like so, yeah. some guys are going there doing homework I was, I, was, I was making myself a ridiculous amount of hot yeah, chocolates in, and yeah. playing pool instead and of doing us stuff doing, like that instead yeah. of us doing hood rat things yeah. we were there like on the computers updating our yeah, people it, it was an escape for us or like you were saying you, like like you should explain to the people like Friday Night Football yeah what like, that was I'm saying like us. even small incentives that you have in the town that makes you feel like a part of the community whereas like again we had the Friday Night Football thing and for context again it was the mo- like literally if you put it on paper it sounds like the easiest thing you could do it doesn't need a big huge support behind it like you don't need to put a lot of money into this you just need a yeah. football pitch and you need yeah. people to supervise it and that's it and you just spread it word of mouth and that's how it happened we didn't, yeah. we didn't have it on our phones we said oh they came, they came into our schools they were like who's ever interested sign up you can sign up with your friends whatever and all we had to pay was subs to keep this thing running and the thing is even if you didn't pay it they would understand and they'd let, yeah. you, like, they'd let you pay the people yeah. who had the money could do it yeah. and if you didn't have the money it was on tick basically basically yeah if you didn't have 3 or bring 6 euro next week yeah that's, that's what it used to be like but like you, like you had people who hated each other who, if they see each other out on the streets, they would beat the shit out of each other. But they would play against each other in football, yeah. and you would see them give them give her a hard tackle, and that was the way they let out the vent their frustrations with the other person. Mm-hmm. That was the release. So that was what I was gonna say too. Like there was always that thing in 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 Friday night football. Any animosity you had with someone I was like, listen, man, for two hours. Hanging around with the Astro, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna nutmeg the fuck out of you, or I'm yeah. just gonna do, I'm gonna, you go past me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick you. Yeah, 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 and we're leaving it on the pitch. Yeah, at the end of the day, we'll shake hands at the end of the game. With the exception of maybe there was a few. Of course, and there's always going to be yeah. people that seek yeah. out violence in any. And to be honest, from what we remember, it was always the lowest of the low dudes in in course, Like yeah. they, we don't have to say, but they know who they yeah. are. It was always that. It yeah. was always the low lowlifes in Brigham. Like, anybody any, else? Any, that had, any like, excuse? Any excuse? Like 
they would have they do it in school they do it anywhere it doesn't yeah. matter but yeah 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 just because a, a small minority of people are doing that doesn't mean that the whole thing was a bad thing yeah, because no, no. in my experience and all my friends experience actually where is it my trophy is right there i'm gonna get my trophy while he's looking for his trophy but like even even for me like like some shit like that like like friday night football that's considered like a failed project almost in the sense that people will sometimes remember for oh yeah it was this thing that happened for about two seasons and then it flopped and people fought but in hindsight there's a trophy there folks if you're watching the visual we were the first this guy won it we were the first this first team went all the way we were the first people to ever win friday night football i was the guy that floated on teams i was nicholas and alka of uh, friday night football man I'm gonna leave my trophy right there. I didn't, I didn't stand. I, I didn't stay on a team for too long. Like, I was like, sorry, I anyway, know you're speaking to the champ right now. Yeah, no, you're speaking to Nicholas and Alka Friday Night Football. You're speaking to the every team will join. What do you think? And I give a contribution. Are we allowed to say his name? Who? Just jo- Probably not. I can blur it out, like. Yeah, well, yeah, blur, blur it please blur it out. But yeah, yeah. Jo- <laughs> say it again, blur it. <laughs> okay, beep, beep, beep. Okay. <laughs> We're on Blur out because I don't even want, I don't even want to be bringing anyway, these yeah. guys into frame. Yeah, basically this guy was feared about bringing man. I remember nutmegging this guy all night. I really do hope you blur it out because the last <laughs> thing I want. I'll clip it, I'll clip okay. It. <laughs> I don't want people fighting me over a podcast because you know what? People won't do that. People My guys know who we are. His name begins with J. No, don't. That's, no, bleep that. His out name too. begins with J. They don't know. I'm not bleeping that. They know who. They, they know who he is. They know who he is. But uh, yeah, man, I don't make the soul out of this guy, man. And uh, I remember, I remember, I remember, uh, I remember, like just after the match, someone, some, uh, so I shoulder checked them as well. Yeah. I just remember at the end of the match, someone goes, "Yeah, man, you shouldn't be not making that guy." Yeah. Shoulder checking that guy. He's gonna beat the like, shit out of you for like, no reason. We had some fucking like for every guy that was just there, want to leave out on the pitch. We had some hood rats there. That's just that's what I'm saying. It was some sort of release. I had to be yeah. some sort of release. Yeah. Because Sarah Man wanted to be there just to two foot a guy. Yeah, that's and that's okay because yeah. that's a lot better than fights in the alleyway and shit like that yeah. or, or fights around the corner like right at the little where it was at like do you know what I mean but uh, like for me it would it would see groups that would never mingle with each other actually mingle yeah and it's fine yeah that's, that, that's like, I, would great, talk, I would talk to people who I'd never speak to outside of the football yeah yeah like, I wouldn't say I wouldn't in, upon reflection I wouldn't say like friendships were formed but it's just everybody no but was, I'm saying like as, as a whole would you view that as a success I would view it as a concept. Okay, wait, a better question, actually. Would you feel if something like that, if more things like that were introduced in today's society, in the way kids are now, do you think that would help, like, narrow down the kind of antisocial behavior we have now? So I'll go with it by, uh, from a concept. The concept of it should have been vastly successful because it's a concept where you get people together with the same common goal, they come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, you know, different spectrums of life. Some of the guys are probably even beefing each other, like we said. Yeah. But it's where you bring all these people together with the same common interest and you also implement a common goal to it. So it's incentivized. So if you win, like what, what happens to you when you want it? You, 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 you go to this competition. Yeah, you got to take it to a competition yeah. if you want it. So there's incentive involved to it. Because us as well, you always need a center for anything that you're doing. You're going to need an center for people to but do But especially it. us in particular as young men. Yeah. Because us as young men, a lot of what we do, a lot of what we do, it's like a primal thing for us is to get a reward out of it. And like bragging rights, anything, like, it's a, it's a lot that like, if you won, you were yeah. like a hot shit, like you were, you were that guy. But us as men where our egos have always needed something yeah. there. This to uh, as an accomplishment yeah. as a man go this is what we said in the podcast before this is the theories that we have that men get so immersed in video games and yeah. football and stuff like that because in football when we see our team win it feels like we're vicariously winning yeah, with them through them yeah so that's the, and a, a reward for us that's an achievement if i see if you see liverpool win the champions league you felt like you've won yeah. it with them that's what we see grown men when you see why is Girl that man still, why, why is that six year old still wearing his Liverpool jersey? Well, no, like, but like, when you see people like, oh, why is someone crying, crying over a football yeah. game? Yeah, that's another conversation. But men need that. Yeah, men need that. Men need that for themselves. 
they need it as a they need it as a fantasy like because let's face it if you're winning Friday Night Football you guarantee I'm actually winning the Champions League no but it feels like you're dismiss that trophy on your table there but like <laughs> but like it feels like you're equivalent of yeah, the Champions League yeah it feels the equi- it, it's equivalent it's, it's, it's the it's closest just, that yeah, I will yeah. get it's to that it's that release that men need and it's that whole objective leads to reward yeah and that's all that lads need for lads to be in this town and be aimless a lot of stuff in this town is aimless and it's not it's yeah. not working towards nothing if you implement something in this town for 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 young men in like that it's the same thing there's a common goal towards it mm. and there's a reward out of it i can't see how it fails but we don't try it yeah the only when's thing, the last time we've tried it you know but i think i don't know if we're at a stage now where because i can only see the worst happening now like if we tried to do something like that i don't know no but i'm saying if you tried this now with the kids today you know something's gonna happen you're gonna hear something oh did you hear what happened at that friday night football this happened this happened this happened a lot of um and i think a way that i know i don't want to be shutting on about the friday night football the whole time but we there was a juniors and a seniors going on at the same time and then the seniors kind of held a level of respect to me anyway whereas like I wouldn't want to act out because I know they're there as well I don't want to embarrass myself in oh, front of a lot of old you've men you've taken this yeah you've taken this on another conversation I'm actually glad you brought that back up there is a difference in generations in our town yeah and and sorry to interrupt again but I had this level of respect for the people who are older than me yeah. kids today do not give a fuck about who I am they don't care yeah. if I'm a 22 year old and they're 17 yeah. they will not get, they'll tell me to shut the fuck up and go away Yeah, I wouldn't do that as a kid that's the thing that's why I think we're built different now I think um, I think uh, I think the way we are now is because a lot of the olders in this town laid out the foundations Yeah. so I think a lot of the credit has to be distribute to the older generation so yeah to the generations before because us because they didn't even because Bob Brigham is still a very new town so they, so they might have not even had anyone before us yeah and they kind of and we're talking to, we're talking to dudes now that are about 26 to 30 now yeah like the olders yeah so a lot of what we did we're trying to move like them like when I when I go when, when I go to uh, Friday Night Football and I see yeah that's dude he's been he's been He's actually been just at home all this time, uh, like like for if he's our older, and I go to Friday night football, and I see oh yeah he's just been at home working on a skill just so he can be ready for Friday night football. Yeah. Or he's been there, or <laughs> like well, fuck, what was I say like Tyro like like yeah. like you go you go there and Tyro will be fucking biceps bulging yeah, yeah, out yeah, like yeah. and he'd be like yeah Tyro was working out like and Tyro's doing this or some guy be like yeah he's been here he he's been like kicking his ball as well all week like just yeah. to be ready for this yeah and they're all older as you'd see and it was like psychologically you wanted to be like that too exactly and that's where i feel like it differs today because yeah a lot of these kids now they're living better lives than i do these kids they have all their fancy clothes they have all their materialistic things a lot of these dons have more money than us and but my, my sister my sister told me that today and that's not like a, it sounds real backhanded it like if I, I know like oh, there's I'm a not, hustle there there's a hustle that has to be there too they yeah. obviously they're not getting their money in legal ways a lot of them I'm speaking for the very few yeah. people but I'm saying I know allegedly <laughs> listen but uh, <laughs> like when you see them ride around on their electric scooters and shit like that you know what they a lot do a of these guys have three bags do you have, do you have three bags three or four bags no there's no need for me to have three or four bags a lot of these guys a lot of these kids have, I, I won't say we're here I'll just say okay. I have a little sister you know okay. yeah, a lot of these guys have three bags okay I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not complaining I don't have three or four bags on me at the moment. <laughs> a lot of these youngers are living yes and I'm saying yeah. that they don't have that level of respect for us as we did uh, the generation that came for us yeah I feel that's yeah. just my personal opinion yeah because that um that's that psychological thing where you saw someone on Friday Night Football and you had that respect for them. That applied then even when you saw 
that same guy graduate from college when you see, when you were walking down the street and you used to yeah. see each other and they know your face as well they'd be like oh that's a little they'll kid still know your face that's a little kid from front of football what's up and yeah. when, you, when they said what's up to you you felt like oh look at me this guy knows who I am this guy knows who I am and he has my he has my best interest at heart when yeah, he and stops and there's, and there's talks a mutual respect for one another at that stage but you get to that age where you, where you get close enough in age too where there's a mutual respect and it's kind of like if I'm partnering up, you need to be partnering up too. There's no excuses. And I don't, I don't want this to sound like that. I'm an older person who just hates on the younger people because, like, a lot of young people are very lovely and they're very nice people. Like, it's a lot of them are. But yeah. I'm saying, there is that stark majority that I've come across in this town that they just don't respect anyone. And I, don't, and I think it's stupid. I don't believe in that. Just because someone's older than you, you need to respect them. Mm. I think that's a whole stupid concept in general. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's from it. Like, like I just don't get what point they're trying to prove. Because they're hard. It's it's with the it's with their friends. They need they have to uphold a certain place in society now. But what's the end result of all this? Well, I think. Could they tell me where what the end result of it is? That's the question that we. I'd love to know. Like, if what's the end result to it? Yeah. Like ultimately, like what's gonna like. What's gonna happen? Do you want your gang to be a roaring success where they're famous like bandits in America or something like that? Or are you eventually naturally gonna grow apart? I mean like why is it yeah. doing that shit for four years? Yeah. That's four years time I can't take back now. Yeah. That's four years time as well where I have to still look over my shoulder. But I think as I think as I think as a grown as a man growing up, yeah, when you rely on being with your f- boys the whole time and the only way you know is it's being with your friends too. all the time man when you're living in that lifestyle you don't know how to act when you're an adult when you get thrown into the adult world and you have no one to rely on like that yeah you're thrown in the fucking deep end you're in deep water yeah it's in it's in deep war. like it, it's not um it's not a yeah us trying to complain or lecture or anything like that but yeah. it's, it's us coming from a place where it's not it's not it's on the same scale but there was a time where i was pretty codependent on my boys yeah definitely and then there's but one you learn, day you learn how to grow out of it you learn how to grow out of it but you're not doing it being aware and then one day you're just like oh shit i'm really not with my boys anymore yeah like i guess like, like i still have the privilege of seeing them and stuff but like i'm really not deep with them like i was what like i was when i was 18 17 yeah. or whatever like that yeah and then i see realize you're really out on your own on this on, on this sort of thing and then at the end of the day like you need to realise that the, you really are out there for yourself like, yeah and when it comes to the end of things you are the only person who's ever yeah. going to do something you're not going to but like to know if they know that because we always knew that but we, I don't think we always knew that as kids I uh, think like in an idealistic world it, my friend group for example I always thought that me and my friends were going to stay friends the whole time but now you can see like we've all emigrated to different areas like we're, in, we're across the whole world yeah. And you never expected that to happen. Yeah. But you just deal with it and you go about it in your own way, like. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. You just have to deal with it. And, but that's what I'm saying. I just love to know if they know the same. And I think it would be interesting for us to actually open that dialogue with someone who is younger. Yeah. Yeah, I'd want to open that dialogue with someone. Um. Okay. Now that we have, um, Sorry if there is lots of this. We're not trying to lecture. Sorry we have lectured. Old man shit. Some, yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. Some old man shit. Bro, why, why are these fucking comments about being connected, man? It's just, it's just blatant racism. No other way. It's to, racist. Fuel. No other way to describe. It's it. all these fucking pseudo nationalists, man. That just say like, yeah. What? What? Like, what but they rinse to repeat the same thing. They're like, yeah. oh, classic Sinn Fein, or oh, of course you would say that. It's like they try and make everyone fit a narrative. Where it's like, if you think that. If you call someone out for the blatant racism, they think that you are just radically left, and like yeah. that's all you believe in. You think, oh, this, this, and that, that you're so progressive, whatever. But no, I'm not radically left. I also, I also told off these youngers that were doing this shit. Exactly. But I'm also saying to you, get the fuck out of here, you racist shit. I just, I just don't understand it. That I always, I, I obviously understand that people get the entertainment of yeah. getting reactions out of people online. I think it's weird if you're a 40 plus year old and you're looking for reactions off people on Facebook very strange it's weird dopamine behavior. for some of these guys like there's, there's just no inject way. that straight to yeah. their veins like. yeah there's no other way I can put that that's dopamine for people but then like the fucking radical nationalists and shit like that that are like like one of 32 county and every every immigrant yeah. deport back to this country half of you wouldn't even fight for this no 
if a civil war kicked off tomorrow, a, a lot of you guys are staying at home, like. Well, that's the whole like um, I've seen the whole debate about whether, like our our generations like about snowflake type people like once shit starts hit the fan, we just flake. Yeah. I think. I think as young people, we're just very we re, we're very reactionary to whatever happens. A lot of people don't sit back and think about things. That mm-hmm. is like when something happens, we just say the first thing that's in our head. Yeah. Which can be detrimental and it can be very good in some senses. Well, it's the whole culture now of getting out there first. Yeah, whereas like, yeah. and we have the means to do so. Yeah. We have the means to go onto our phone as soon as something happens. We just recorded this, let's post this, no context, no nothing. Yeah. And that's where it comes from, where we see a video of a lot of people fighting on a field and no context behind it. We get this video, it just happened and someone posted it five minutes later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have all the... Oh, I'm sorry. The people... That taught, um, oh, yeah, usually my story's not that entertaining. I just bait, I just post them fucking muffins I baked and all my boring yeah. fucking, you know, mundane fucking life. Banana bread. Oh, but now this house is on fire. Let's film this shit. Yeah. It doesn't matter who was involved. Sorry if I'm shouting if your mom's Yeah, my mom's gonna chilling. beat the shit out of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S- sorry if there's real life families involved in this shit that have to go through this tor- turmoil and I think that's houses. one thing that a lot of people don't realise they don't they don't diminish between reality and what is fiction now whereas like they can post something on the internet and they don't care about the consequences for a real family that is right beside them they don't give a fuck about the consequences they just care about what is in it for them like yeah yeah just uh, just just a few replies to your story like a few likes yeah a few it's fucking swipe sad, up and a few man. fire reacts it's sad and like I hope people I hope this podcast surfaces and people see it who people know who they are when, when we're saying this because like yeah it's a lot of guys too that every other day look at their story and the story's fucking dead a lot of you post fucking shit and I'm, I'm, I'm including myself well, like, yeah, no, but like, I, I post some fucking shit we post some fucking shit but what's the point in trying to capitalise off a moment yeah which has been happening so much this year whether good or bad what is the point in trying to capitalise on, uh, on a moment Instead of for a second sitting back on it, observing the situation and getting some more context to it. People give a fuck about context though. But how's your immediate reaction if you see smoke coming from a house? How do you know man are still in that house? No, how but, you know people are but this still is this is something house? that is definitely like whereas like I don't mean to like make this something that it's not, but I'm saying like even videos of with the whole George Floyd thing, the f- people's first reaction was to record a man being like Strangled to death. That's different, though. No, but I'm saying yeah. a lot of people's first reaction is to pull out their phone and just record shit. Yeah, and that's. Uh, but that's in a scenario where the only way you can yeah. take a, take affirmative action on it is by videoing it. Yeah, but like there is a lot of other things. Like uh, probably that was a bad reaction, like a bad way to put it. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with the like when. But I see what you're saying. But like though. when Excess and Tentacion died, yeah, when he got shot in his car. Yeah, yeah. He, he he. If someone gave him, uh, like if someone went over there and gave him resuscitation and stuff like that he could have been saved but everyone just recorded his death yeah and like it's them small things where you don't realise what you're doing at the time and it comes out to be something that yeah but that's what I mean like imagine if everyone who was recording that video of the fire god forbid that there was people in the house and then it turned out that the family like whatever obviously god forbid that ever happened but but that's what I'm trying to say you see smoke coming from a house and the first thing you do is video it yeah the fuck is wrong with you like, mm. what, like what, what, what's actually in your head? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Because, like, like we said with the X thing and related to other stuff, what, what happens with a lot of this stuff is it, they publish it. If they're the first to publish it, it's this culture of getting it out there first. Exactly. Because they get it out there first. They have a news blog or some outlet that replies to their story and goes, can I, yeah, man, can I use this. this? Yeah, can I we'll use this? We'll send you cash. We'll, we'll, give, do, you we'll, we'll give you credit for it. Imagine but getting credit for something like that. Cloud currency, bro. It's fucking cloud currency. Yeah. So I don't know if this was like people's hope when they're videoing this shit because like, oh yeah, my story's boring as fuck every other day and no one gives a shit about I that. Think it's, like, I think it's subconsciously they just post something, they see something going on, their first re- reaction is to record it. I don't think... Oh, there too? Yeah, I was there too, bro, but it's a fucking small place. Yeah, but I don't think their first reaction is... I don't think the whole thing is that they're doing it for a reason. This is what yeah. I believe. There's no, yeah, there's no... This, it's, it's strange, man. Yeah. It's very oh. strange. Weird behavior. But I should man. probably... Change the recording. Yeah. But the whole thing with the Bob Riggins stuff, um, 
By the way, we watch Atlanta, and I'm like, and like everyone that watches Atlanta knows that you have a scenario in your life where you're like, oh shit, this is kind of like an Atlanta episode. Yeah. So this happened to me the day of the fire. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get a. I want to make myself a salmon tagliatelle, which I'll see. Well, which I'll see. Because I started, I started doing my cooking thing, you know what I'm I know, saying? you I brought know. salmon to my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my cooking, yeah. I, basically, I like well, to nah, make I've a been, lot of salmon. Been, if you but don't know, I've been making chunks. good meals lately. Yeah, meals I've been making have been. Let's look after yourself, man. Yeah, Just look right. after yourself 2020. That's true. I'm sick of this narrative that 2020 shit. Like. Make 2020 what you still want to make it. Like there's, mm. still, there's still a whole second half of this year. <laughs> now we really bottled. But now we're really bottled because realistically, if you put that energy out there, the 2020 is just shit, bro. It's only gonna get shit for you. So you may as well try try to take control of it to some extent. The only thing that's over control is this COVID shit. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, I decided to. So yeah, moral story: start cooking for yourself, look after yourself, do all yeah. this shit. Cause drink I'll some water. Too. Drink some more. Yeah, meditate. Mm. I am. Um, I'm making myself this salmon tagliatelle, and I go to Lidl, and I can't find my pasta. So I start getting really worked up. That I can't find this specific pasta. So I say, right? They said, yeah, we might only have it in Tesco. Wait, who did you ask? I asked staff. I'm a Karen now, bro. Bro, you you really actually are. I fully asked staff. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an old man now. I'm a Karen or you I'm a Karen. I'm a male staff. Karen. Yeah, ask staff. Say, excuse me, where's your tagliatelle? Oh god. They said they didn't have it. So I said, okay, where can I get it? Oh my and god. And they said, oh Tesco. So I said, okay, say less. Now, like uh, that's why because uh, I'm a Karen, but I'm different. I said, yeah, okay, say less. Nah, you should you should start giving out to the staff. So I went to yeah, so I went to my little boy, yeah, I said this is unacceptable. How do you not have tagliatelle? He's have every other pasta on I the shelf. I want you to go behind. I want you and to check. get me my tagliatelle now, please. Can you go to the back room and check at least for me? Yeah, but I went on my bike to uh, head to Tesco. And I went the way where you go past the train viaduct and stuff. I cycled all the way through Barbrig and this could have been a slow highlight reel where I, I, I cycled through Barbrig and bro, I saw hella blanche lads. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw blanche lads rolling. Deep. I was out that day as well, and I seen like thirty plus. Yeah, yeah, like all the mobs, like ten deep each time. Like mm. I saw hella blanched lads. I even saw them eye me down. Like trust me, listen, bro, I'm just trying to get my pasta. Yeah, I'm just to, it's probably like uh, some Atlanta shit. I'm like, if these stop me, I'm just gonna say, look, I'm just trying to get pasta. I'm just trying to get pasta. Like, and I, I like, I fucking cycle through there, cycle past the viaduct. Saw these guys rolling deep. Saw a bunch of boys we know ready for war. Mm. I'm like, I'm still just trying to get my pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cycle through, I shouldn't even be making a joke, but cycle through the estate where the fire was taking place. I'm just trying to get my past that. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, bro, what's going on? You like, picked what? the worst route. I'm like, why is Bob Brigham. Like, you didn't think about that, you picked the worst route to go. I know, I was like, why is Bob Brigham burning down today and there's fight and there's war and shit? I'm like, I'm just trying to get my past that. It's really like the episode with Ern trying to get his jacket back. Or Ern trying to get her hair cool. Yeah. Oh, no, or uh, yeah, Paperboy trying to get her hair yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, Paperboy. Yeah. yeah. It's all these encounters. <laughs> I, need to, I need to get hit on my bike then. I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to get my pasta. I see the I see the burnt, I see the house practically burnt out at this stage. Mm. Then I literally go and another corner, there's an abandoned house, like the, like the crack house. I'm like, bro, what am I seeing? I'm just trying to get my fucking pasta. Hey, yo, baby, man, I just want to get my uh, fucking hair cut. I just want to get my fucking <laughs> Yo, BB, man, I'm telling you, I'm just trying to get my, I'm just trying to get my hair cut, bro. And hey, uh, fucking, um, yeah, so, yeah, I eventually get my pasta, and I do the same route back, and I see all this shit again. I'm like, this was remarkable. Yeah. I'm just trying to get my pasta and my cream friche. Bro, that has to be the title. And there's some that has to be shit going on, That has to be the title of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Still doing pasta. Tag me Italian cream friche. Yeah, bro. Listen, that's a good recipe. Look, it's on, it's on the John Deere website. I've gone full Karen. Full Karen's fun, too. I was thinking about going vegan. I did the vegetarian thing for two months. It's 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 all right, but you went like, full vegetarian for two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper didn't uh, proper didn't eat any meat for like two months. Yeah, it's it's all right. I think I'm kind of going off uh, pork in general. Yeah, pork, 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 pork is not pork's not eat, ate that frequently. I just don't think pork is necessary in society. I think we've overstepped the need for pork. Oh yeah, but pork pork is like a luxury meat. I genuinely I genuinely think though, growing like up, pulled pork and shit like that and. Yeah, bit of pork on a barbecue or something. I think that grown up pork chops is genuinely top five worst dinners I've ever had. Yeah, pork chops are literally the devil. I don't know. Pork chops used to come in clutch for me sometimes. 
See, this is what we are built different. Well, bro, sometimes I like, sometimes I'll just be starving. Yeah, sometimes know. sometimes you'd have your dad throw an onion on a cheese toastie, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not getting into that. Bro, I can make a whole podcast just off of. We my need dad. to do a master chef with just you and your dad. You can actually cook your I'm salmon. I'm smoking my dad. You think so? No, you think, you maybe not on Sunday roast. If he if he pulls out the, yeah, su- the Sunday yeah. roast Uno card, mm. he might win. Listen, my dad is funny. Like, like oh, dad, oh, uh, do the story. Do the story. But what am I doing the story? Oh. Okay, so <laughs> I'm um, I'm probably giving you a lot of hint as to why I've been going to doctors. But basically, I think I have an injury on my left side, and it's affected me in the gym. You know, when you go to the gym, you just have yeah. that little shoot of pain in your shoulder, mm-hmm. and any momentum you have, it just yeah. stops. Like I'm just like, oh, okay, I can't even push up this fucking bench yeah. now that's it like you know not a way you can use your testosterone your momentum mm. and shit like that i can't even do this with my left shoulder done in sometimes um yes so i, I was i was rolling around with my dad or whatever uh, in the car and uh, <laughs> i said yeah dad i, I, I think because I, I think i have this injury on my left side like i could my like because my bench is about 80 say 80 kg right now which yeah. is respectable yeah but 80 is like 80 is like my natural it's not my max say my max is like 84 yeah it's just 90. what you usually train with I'm cool with that I'm happy with that like you know what I mean because because I, I know I'm not too far I'm on my way to 100 maybe I'd love to say 100 in a few weeks time but yeah, yeah. I'm on my way to 100 and um, I'm telling my dad this I'm like I'm like saying like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm training with like you sometimes yeah. with fams but obviously mainly with fams I say like I'm not even. I'm not trying to do the weight that fams does. I don't have that toxic masculinity where I yeah, see fams yeah. trying to do. I see fams doing 115, no, and actually, I'm trying to do 115. Yeah, you actually have common sense. Yeah, like I sit there, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not trying to do that. Like he goes, okay, good, good son. Yeah, good son. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just don't be trying to do the way he's trying to do or any of the lads, right? He's like, just don't be trying to do it. He's like, he goes. So for context, my dad, um, he. Tells these stories and he. Let's just say he hyperbolic. Yeah, a lot. it's very hyperbolic. A lot of the stories. If you were to go about my dad's stories, he was the best footballer um, in his in 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 his in his district. Like yeah. he bagged all the girls, like all all that stuff. Like he was just a, he was just a maverick of a man. Like but, <laughs> what a way to describe him. <laughs> just a maverick. Maverick like. Al. I know maverick Al. But drew the line for me. So so listen, when he's always told these stories. I haven't tried correcting them on them. No. Because... You let them go That's going to be my pride and joy yeah. one day. I'm going to tell my son, yeah, son, I actually got a... Leinster called me when I was playing rugby and said mm. they wanted me to come down. Like, when if it wasn't for my knee, uh, I would have fucking... Mm. Or, uh, mm. yeah, yeah. Spotify offered us a... When I was your age, right, Spotify offer, offered no, us a No, I won't even say that. I'll say that we had a podcast on Spotify. Yeah, I won't explain I mean, yeah. that. I won't explain that it's free. And yeah, it's and we so got, easy yeah, we got, yeah, we got lucrative sponsorships yeah. on there. Oh, that are they on uh, Spotify? So? No, 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 no. We actually took them down. No, we own our own masters. Yeah, no, we used to have... Yeah, we used to... <laughs> we used to have sponsorship yeah that's gonna be my pride and joy bullshitting yeah. the life out of my son like yeah, and just hyperbole all believe, stories like. yeah seeing what he believe and what he won't believe so yeah I'm like I'm not gonna shoot my dad down for that so I'm telling him yeah my bench is 80 90 kg mm. and uh, I'm not trying to do that 110 fam stores that are 115 fam stores yeah maybe maybe yeah. But soon yeah he goes yeah when I was your age right, son Say at my peak on the construction site, so no, would say, say I was lifting a uh, 200 kg. Big man, 200 kg. I said, is that your, was that your max, was that your max bench? He goes, nah, that was just like, that's, my, just, what I'd that's just what I'd lift that. I said, dad, that is fucking bullshit. I was like, dad, that is absolute fucking bollocks. I think people are sick of it. I'd say anyone's this is probably, because I've told all my personal friends the story, because I'm like, this is such bollocks like like that is that must be competition way like mountain man and shit must be, that's what they must be lifting as as like their as their average bench what are you researching you must be researching something on this right now yeah our bodies aren't built to bench 200 on the regs like can't be look at Kevin getting in his google he looks like the hacker in the movie <laughs> but like like deeper, he he tried like he tried casually saying that he tried going, oh yeah, my bench used to be a uh, two hundred back in the day. I was like, that that's absolute fucking bollocks. And he goes, what do you mean? Like he's never heard that on my mouth in his life ever. Like when he's been telling me his stories, I'm like, that that is bullshit. Like, 
And he's like, no, like, I used to lift that. But he did have, like, I don't know, fair enough points. And even when I was telling some people, I was like, well, I mean, if he was working on the construction sites, because my dad's yeah, a carpenter. Yeah, because you have that trade. Mongo strength as well. When yeah, you- yeah, you have that Mongo strength when you're working on the sites. You're probably going 80, 70 kg on every bit of, like, timber or whatever you're carrying. Or, or I, I don't know what they do on sites. But, like, yeah. He tried getting the 200 kg off, bro. I was like, that is some BS. This is so hard to actually Google. Yeah, fuck Googling, because we're on an hour now, and so yeah. we're almost wrapped up. Yeah, so that's my dad's bullshit story there. But, man, he's just he's just funny, man. I can make a whole podcast out of him. What else happened? Like, talk about my uh, carnism. You're so determined to still find what you're trying to Google. Man, someone can bench press 500 kg... Can they? The world record for bench press is 501 kilograms. So you can at least, yeah. But no, that's someone who is... Let's see what he looks like. That's one big fucker, I'd say. This is just going off tangent completely. No, because uh, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like I'm picturing my dad now lifting 200, but my dad was, like... Would have been a strapping guy, like, when he was younger and shit. Did your dad look like that? Nah. That's a guy. That's a guy that's lifting two hundred kg light work. Like that's that's the guy that's the five hundred. That's what I'm saying. You have to be like out to here to be doing two hundred kg. Not even your max bench. You have to be not even your max bench. Like you have to be like this. Just because you're lifting concrete on the yeah. construction side. But it didn't make any sense to me because at one stage my dad was actually fucking huge in a gym. Like only like Maybe eight years ago. Maybe that sounds true. No, but my dad. No, said, I'm giving him the benefit. My dad of the said doubt. back then he goes at your age. No, he go no. He said I was lifting one forty then. Which is valid because he was actually big. But for him to say, yeah, when I was like 20 years old or 21, yeah. I was benching 200. I was like, dad, no fucking but way. But I think in the gym as well, like if you're just doing stuff on a construction site, you actually need to be in the gym as well. So, like, to actually nah, get you're really, That's what he told me though. The thing is, you really didn't, like, you. you no, but like form wise to lift that heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't just go in there with like, a flat back. And yeah, just, like lifting a bit of timber is completely different to having to have the form, right? Yeah. On yeah. a bench, and I just think our bodies aren't built to be lifting two hundred. I, I think the worst thing we're doing is actually fighting this. Like we shouldn't be fighting what your dad said. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I sound like a hater, to be honest. I can't hate on Big Al. Like do you nah. know what I mean? Nah, but, respect. Yeah. What else happened? My conversion to Karenism actually. Well, you. The whole episode has just been around you being a Karen. Yeah, I'm a Karen now. I got a refund, bro. You finally got that refund. Yeah, on a subscription. So, I am. Um, I subscribe to Financial Times. I'm basically boycotting Financial Times. So if you see any, uh, if you see any trends to um, us uh, fact checking stuff, not as good because Financial Times is one of the most reliable sources. It's because I'm boycotting Financial Times because Financial Times kept charging me for my subscription, despite the, despite the fact I was canceling it each time. So one of my lecturers made me get Financial Times because uh, it, it's where he wanted us to do sourcing from yeah. for an assignment. So I got it, but with Financial Times, it's like, oh, do this subscription uh, one year for a month or whatever. Like, it's like, it's, like, it's like a form of a free trial. I didn't read the dot line. I didn't read the disclaimer, though, because the disclaimer the disclaimer is always subtle on these. Um, I don't read anything. I no, I don't I read don't. shit. Like, so it's just literally like, and there's, there's a lot of subtleties to the disclaimers. So they didn't say that, once you pay the one euro on you and you and your subscriptions up after the month, you immediately move on to the full 60, 60 or fifty to read some articles on Financial Times, man. That's like paying sixty or fifty to get like just the fucking newspaper if that that costs a few cents in the print press, like that's like paying sixty euro for that. I was like, I'm not paying fucking sixty or fifty a month for Financial Times. So obviously I went straight to cancelling. So, I see a charge come out the next month, and I and I, I you can't even ring them, bro. My bag is ringing these people and interrogating them. Like I should be, I should be a service interrogator. Like you need a refund, call me. Mm. That should be my side job. I'll literally like, I'll I'll be relentless on these guys. But the chatbots, man. Oh. That's where they throw the little curb in. That's, chatbots that's when you only. Start getting frustrated. Yeah, it was chatbots only. Um, they didn't have it in my region, the number. So I have to, I have to go through chat agents. So I go through, so I'm going through chat agent. 
and fucking this guy's just getting mad lippy with me like i don't even know if this guy's an ai or he's a fucking real dude i'm i'm i'm, I'm on the head with my mac right now mm. because this guy is literally like well you should have read the dot line disclaimer and stuff Facts. like that like you said Facts. i mean he's but yeah but listen i'm a customer a dumb one at that but I'm still using your service the customer's always right I'm still using your service <laughs> run me my peas so I said run me my peas and he's like um, oh yeah but uh, all we can do is do an approval for you we can, we can, we can, uh, we can apply for you to get your refund subject to approval but we can only get you one month I said no no Run me my three months. You're such a Karen. I That's, want my three months. I said, no, th- I said that wouldn't suffice. Run me my three months. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, we just have to check subject to approve. And then they start trying to get into the technicalities of it. They're like, well, technically, you were logged in last month. Mm. Fam, I was logged in to fucking end my account. Because constantly, these guys, like they said, 25th of July. I said, 25th of July, I can tell you what happened. I logged in for two seconds to hit the... End end subscription thing and I log back out. They're like, well, how do we know? How do we know you weren't using our services? Mm. I'm telling you right now, on the 25th of fucking July, I went into log out your thing. They're like, well, we just have to run it subject to approval. I was like, no, listen, Aaron. Aaron? Run me my fucking. You're not going to beat an Aaron, though. Aaron's going to put you on no, stress. No, listen. So technically, I didn't beat the Aaron, but because you know what the Aaron did? The Aaron pulled a triple Uno card to me. He said he reverse your reverse. He said he said he said uh, it said chatbot out of service now. There was a disconnection. That's picking up force. That man pulled the plug out. Like that man probably pulled the plug out. His whole shit is all mine. Well, he's not like, stressed now. He's working from home. Like, yeah, yeah. He's not dealing with it, David. So listen, they said any inconveniences. Help at ft dot com email, mm. bro. So you went into your email bag. I copy and pasted that address swiftly, very quickly, just double click, very swiftly. So I gave them, <laughs> I emailed them, and I gave them a play by play. It was a very passive aggressive email. At that. Pa- yeah, you saw the email. I might pull up the email. Just that should for, be no. That should content. be the picture of the podcast. I might pull up episode. the email just for content. Yeah, I sent a play by play of what happened with this guy. I told him everything, and I was like, "Yeah," and said he said he'd give it subject to approval. But listen, I, I should. I'm a student. Mm. That was like saying, oh, that's the equivalent of saying, I'm your customer, I'm using your service. Bro, I use all You these, actually asked to talk to the manager. Yeah, I use words like the service, I use mm. inconvenience, I use all this stuff. like, And I didn't stop email them until I got the refund. It was like a daily, just like a daily email for about three or four days. Congratulations. Yeah, it's Karen. I'm saying good. Listen, Karen. Karenism works. The non racist Karens. Not the Karens that use their Karenism to inflict like racial. Hatred or racial beat yeah. or anything like that. Not the Karens that ring the that rang that black guy in the park like the choice get yeah, the police yeah, on yeah. him. Not that Karenism. That that's that's that's, that's not your bag. Yeah, no, that's not my bag. My bag is the Karenism that gets you a gets you a refund or good service. Yeah, or gets your hotel voucher moved over to the next week because they can't refund you. Like, listen, I'm either getting my hotel or I'm gonna need you run to me re- my like, fucking refund. I'm gonna I'll ask do you it for you. Yeah. I'll do it for you too. Anything I need done, I'm gonna Anything get you, you need, do. hit me up. 085-164-8360. Is that your actual This is it? an ad, yeah, this is an ad getting put out. If you, you want me to just got if you want podcast. me to carry you your way back to your to your bank refund. My COVID is hitting differently. This is yeah, your new job. It is a side income. You want me to carry them I'm, I'll bully them on the phone. I'll bully them on the phone. I'll say, listen, you are an anonymous fucking asset in this company. You are nothing to them. You're just a number. So how about you do how something you useful them against in your company? life? How about you do one useful thing in your life and run me my fucking refund? I'll have the guy crying on the phone, man. I'll make him fucking cry on the phone. I have no doubt about that. Like, mm. I'll bully these guys into refunding me. That's not the first... I'll, I'll bully guys on the phone. But, like, for someone who works in retail... I think nah, you, you have an ex- no, you have an excuse. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because I take enough on needless shit. I take enough on 50 cent bobbins. This is high stakes, man. We're talking high stakes. We're talking, they took 180 bags from me. Like, oh, 180 Yeah, bags. 180, man. 180. I'm watching a lot of Top Boy too. Run me my fucking peas. What the fuck is the food, man? What the fuck is the food, man? What the fuck is the food, man? So I had, that, I had that slight aggression in me. And also, yeah, there was another time. When I was ringing about some bank related stuff to, to Ulster Bank, and the guy hung up on me. So, you know what I did? Do you know what I did? Rang back. I rang back. Got his number. I said, Sorry, your colleague, because he told me and he says his name is Darren or something. Oh, I, said, God. I said, 
you know when your colleague your colleague Darren yeah I said Darren hung up on me he just cut me off because I took the call in college so he thought I wasn't being serious because I had to leave my class I was like sorry I just had to leave my class no I was giggling I was like oh sorry I had to leave my class he just hung up on me Yeah. so I said big man Pat your colleague. Can I get Darren's? Just hung up on me. Can Almost, I get Darren's uh, information, yeah. please? Yeah, that's his PPS actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm sending I'm sending a complaint, but uh, yeah, Karen's the way, bro. Karen gets you what you want in life. I saw guys tweeting, yeah, I went for Karen. I got a fucking holiday. Re- I got I got a free trip. Like, well, that's the part of adulthood, and we won't even say like Karenism. It's just having an assertiveness you get what you want oh yeah I think if you're too laid back and, and some get stuff, what you yeah. want you, I stopped being like, laid back no but like when you're really too laid back people are going to manipulate you and take that's advantage that's what I'm saying my mom said this is she's like John I always thought you were laid back you're actually not laid back at all you're actually kind of intense sometimes like yeah because I, I want what I want I want what I did a great alright alright Kobe I don't think <laughs> <laughs> this is Mamba mentality you're of service <laughs> yeah mentality for service yeah I'm Mamba I'm Mamba mentality of phone you calls you wake bro. up every day just typing yeah, emails yeah yeah first thing yeah. in the morning just type an email you're in bed I'm up at just, five you, you're <laughs> drafting emails in the morning you're in bed I'm up at five complaining to Amazon I'm built different bro <laughs> Yeah, there's not an, any better way to end this. <laughs> there's not any way to better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Episode. So if any complaints about the podcast? Don't even try because you're dealing with the ultimate Karen here. If people do actually complain, it will come to my email as well. Yeah. About the podcast. Oh fuck! All right. This is we're episode done. seventeen. Episode seventeen. Over Peace now. out. Some shit that was supposed to be half an hour ended up being an hour and ten. <laughs> We out.